right, everyone, here we go with another episode of Healing Together. My name is Adam. I also go by Coach Hard Gains with a Z on my Hard Gains platform, which is my coaching platform. You can find me at Coach Hard Gains on YouTube, Coach Hard Gains on Instagram, and you can find Healing Together on Instagram as well. Now, I've been coaching bodybuilders for over 20 years. I've also been coaching and mentoring young men, recovering addicts, and those just coming out of prison, teaching them trades, getting them acclimated to a new way of life, teaching them new skills that they've never learned before. So although my practices are pretty broad, one of my main focuses is helping people handle daily chronic pain. I grew up around a mother who had MS, fibromyalgia, she had already had three spinal fusions, and she had a host of other ailments that plagued her on a daily basis. So I grew up with a certain level of empathy towards her. I felt terrible that my mother was always in this pain, and it limited her lifestyle. Now, first off, you'll have to excuse me. Many of you know I was just recently in a car accident. I have very limited function and movement in my neck, and it hurts a lot. But I can't sit around and do nothing, and I can't let this car accident hinder the growth of this channel because it's growing at a rapid rate, and I'm so grateful to all of you for that. But we'll see what I can get done here today, because I am in a lot of pain. So as I was saying, one of my main primary focuses is helping people deal with the daily chronic pains. And you can catch up on my situation in many of my past videos where I discuss what I'm living with. But I don't want to focus on that today. I want to focus on you and what you're living with. A lot of people do reach out to me specifically about how to handle the daily pains that they're in. Now, obviously, oftentimes that does require or consist of medication. We utilize different medications to give us a better quality of life. But there's a fine line, obviously, between utilizing them and abusing them. So we want to make sure that we are managing those medications before getting to a point of addiction. But unfortunately, many of us have already become dependent on them. So that's already become an issue for long-term health. But for instance, to manage my nerve pain, which I have a ton of nerve damage, I utilize gabapentin. But gabapentin can also be a harmful drug because it does lead to memory loss. It can also lead to tremors. It can lead to a lot of other things. But gabapentin is one of the best medications to manage my nerve pain, my daily nerve pain that feels like I'm on fire down my arm, down my leg, up my spine, in my head. I have a TBI. So gabapentin really is a wonder drug. Now gabapentin is also amazing. My number one go-to for kratom breaks. Now we'll talk about kratom in a second. But utilizing gabapentin to take a break with kratom is really the best way to do it because gabapentin attacks the central nervous system. And if you've ever gone through Kratom withdrawal, you know what the restless leg syndrome, what the creepy crawlies, what the entire body shakes. You're going out of your mind because neurologically, your body is just a wreck. So gabapentin kind of attaches to the central nervous system and helps smoothen out all of those nerve pains. So next time you need to take a Kratom break, which I suggest doing very frequently, Go to your doctor, try to get a script for gabapentin, but be careful. And I suggest that you titrate on and wean off gabapentin because it can cause some withdrawal issues in itself. But gabapentin is amazing for your kratom withdrawal and for opiate withdrawal. Now that's what I utilize for my nerve pain. Now what about my daily pains? My pains from my spinal fusion, my pains from my TBI, my brain injury, my pains from my nerve damage down my arm, down my leg, and my spine, in my hips, and now this added pain from the car accident last week in my neck and in my hips. Now I do utilize low doses of Oxy because Oxy really does help acutely. But the problem is once you've been on Oxy for a while or really any narcotics, the efficacy degrades and so it just stops working as well. So that is where Kratom has come into play for me. Kratom has been amazing. It has been such a blessing. At many times, Kratom has given me my life back. It's helped me manage my pain. And I will tell you that I would say 75 to 80% of the time, Kratom works better for managing my acute pain than Oxy or other narcotics does. Kratom just works in a different way. It just gets a little deeper, just functions a little quicker. It just works better. For example, this neck pain that I'm having, 
I don't know if it's from the whiplash of the impact. The car accident that I was in had two impacts. It was not my fault in any way whatsoever. I was driving and an older man, an elderly man, pulled out right in front of me, making a turn, and I T-boned his passenger side, slammed into him there, pushed him into a guardrail, then we slammed the guardrail. I got such bad whiplash in my neck and my hips. It has been horrible. Absolutely horrible. Oxy is not taking away that acute pain, that very specific direct pain. But Red Bolly Kratom, which I've discussed in another video, which is one of my favorite Kratoms, Red Bolly Kratom does hit that acute pain much better. And in fact, Kratom is really one of the only options that when I wake up in the middle of the night, throbbing, which happens every night, Kratom is what will work most directly. If I take a scoop of Kratom, within a half an hour, I can relax. My body is at ease. And narcotics don't do that for me. Dilaudid used to in the beginning, but over time, it just stopped. Now, I've been taking Kratom daily for eight years. Now, that's a lot of experience. Not only do I have that application, but I also study Kratom. I'm also, as a bodybuilding coach, I study men's hormones. So I study my own hormones, and I, I study how Kratom affects my hormones, and it affects it greatly. And again, I've made another video on that specifically, so I'll put a link up in here and you can take a look at that. But I will tell you right now, Kratom is a phenomenal tool to use for pain. Now let's kind of get away from medications because I don't want you to focus just on medications. Obviously, you've got your anti-inflammatories, your ibuprofen, your Celebrex, you've got a host of other options, tramadol and Tylenol and, and everything else, okay? But... Let's remember, pharmaceutical drugs are designed for one thing, to make money. So while many of them do work, a lot of them are really just pushed on us for money. But there really is a lot of natural remedies that you can utilize for pain management. I'm going to go into that in another video, which will be homeopathic, organic, natural pain relief, okay? But for now, one of the main things that I utilize is turmeric. I've been using turmeric for a very long time, but unfortunately, the same thing for that. If you overutilize turmeric, it just stops working, and it's the same for everything. So that's why you really do want to rotate through your options. Be very careful with the rotation because you could have withdrawal symptoms from many things. So just be careful. Make sure you're doing a little overlap, titrating on and weaning off of each substance. But I also want to hit on some very important factors for pain relief, and that is movement. The more I sit around, the more my body just doesn't want to do anything, doesn't want to function, and it just starts to freeze up. So we know that exercise is so important. As a bodybuilder, I try to train six days a week. I have been training for 27 years, so that's what my body knows. Right now, after the car accident, I've already lost eight pounds. Here's a picture of what I looked like the day before my car accident. I don't even look like that now, and I it's been 10 days since the car accident. So I'm a very hard-gaining ectomorph. I lose weight quickly. I have to be eating in surplus and training hard, and I can't do that right now, so I'm going to keep losing weight. And that's hard for me. Mentally, that's hard. So what do I do to manage the mental battle of this chronic pain? The mental battle of starting over. I have had to start over so many times, guys. It's so discouraging. In 2003, I lost function of all my organs. I was in the best shape of my life. I was a performing artist in the music industry. I was a successful model, actor, and I had everything together. And then one day my organs just shut off on me. I started throwing up and then I had it coming out the other end until I had nothing left in me. And I couldn't eat for about five months. I lost over 50 pounds and I was given two months left to live. I saw every one of the best doctors in Princeton, New Jersey. No one could figure out what was wrong with me, but I lost everything. And although I lost everything, the mental battle became the hardest one to fight. And that was the first time that I was truly bedridden and I mean bedridden. I couldn't leave my bed uh, except to go to the bathroom. I was on an IV. I couldn't leave the house for months. And that was terrible. 
Now, I also want to tell you that I've accomplished a lot in my life, okay? I have started many businesses, many companies, many brands. Some of them have been very successful. Some of them have not. I achieved my dreams. I became a performing artist. I got to open up for some huge bands. I was a music producer and an engineer. I was on billboards. I'm not saying this to brag. I'm saying this just to put into perspective that I didn't lead a terrible life. I've led a life worth living. I went after my goals. I chased my dreams. But at the same time, through that all, I have lived in so much pain. I've experienced so many setbacks, so many trials. I've had everything taken from me half a dozen times. I've had to start over from nothing, from a deficit, from zero, from, from having to pay back every loan I could possibly get. But I've also had success in real estate and in house flipping. And again, some of my companies have been award-winning companies. And I've worked my ass off to get to where I am. But here we are, starting over again after a car accident. I mean, literally 18 months ago, I had the spinal fusion and I was just acclimating, finally acclimating to the life I was living, the level of pain, the type of pain, learning how to function through that pain. And it was really hard. And then now with this car accident, it's changed things again. And the mental battle the discouragement, the struggle to get out of bed, knowing that I'm stuck. I can't drive right now. Last time I got in a car after the accident, I bugged out. I freaked out. You know, and I'm a firm believer in God, okay? And my faith in God has carried me through all of my trials. It has literally gotten me through the darkest pits of hell. And I've walked through the pits of hell many times. I've come so close to losing my life so many times that obviously God's got a plan for me. Now I have six kids and I know that I'm here for my kids to protect them, to defend them, to teach them, to raise them. And I will do everything I can to do that. My kids are my world, my world. And over the years, there's been so many people that I've worked with that have changed my life by giving me the opportunity to help and change their lives. And to me, that is what life is about, that cycle, and, and how we're here to help each other get through the darkest times. Because that's the opportunity that we have, that we've been given. And how can we waste that opportunity so that leads me to the next thing, which is prayer and meditation. To me, they go hand in hand. And if you don't believe in God, that's okay, because there's much more around us than, than just God. I mean, God, to me, is the ultimate. God is, that's where it starts, that's where it ends. But maybe for you, that's the universe, or the energy around us, or... Maybe that's God in a different form, and that's okay. So I pray to my Father in heaven every day for guidance, for confidence, for compassion, for love, for strength, for, for support. And I do talk to God, okay? And I do feel comforted many times. And God has saved my life before. I won't get into that right now, but... I can attest to you that my life has been saved because of God multiple times. Now, I also meditate. I meditate on a daily basis. Sometimes that meditation is an out-of-body experience. Other times that meditation isn't fulfilling at all, but at least I did it. Okay, so we're not going to have this incredible existential experience every time we meditate, but it can be had. And meditation is something that we have to practice. It's something that we have to do daily in order to get deeper into the practice of meditation. Now, typically when I meditate, I meditate with purpose, okay? I meditate with, I meditate with a specific direction, but other times I just meditate for peace. And meditation has helped me get through a lot of my pain, a lot of my trials. 
Meditation has also helped me get through those moments of anxiety attacks, panic attacks. And that's also something else that I've had requested, which is making a video on how to get through panic attacks, anxiety attacks. But meditation is an incredible tool. And remember guys, getting through our chronic pain is gonna change from day to day. And it's gonna be different for each one of us because of our biochemical individuality. We are all different. We have different biochemical profiles, which is why addiction and withdrawal and dependency is different for each one of us. I get infuriated when people say that we're all the same and that addiction is the same for all of us because that is a person who's never worked with people. You can find two people who have been addicted to something and you'll know automatically right away how individual this is. And you can't treat people in a generalized way because you're never going to help them. You're never going to help them have the tools that they need, that they specifically need to get through their addiction, to overcome their dependency, whatever it is. I mean, so those are the main things that I utilize for pain. But let's be real. When I wake up in the middle of the night at 2 a.m. and I am in screaming pain, my nerves are on fire and my back is inflamed and throbbing, I'm going to go towards pain management. For me, the best quickest method is kratom. Sometimes I'll grab the ice pack and the heating pad. I'll lay on that while my kratom is kicking in. But kratom is amazing. Amazing. And I can't say enough about it. But please, I encourage you, treat kratom with respect. Go watch all my other kratom videos so that you understand the truths, the dangers, and an and a correct introduction to Kratom, okay? So friends, I hope that that answers some questions that I've gotten, and I hope that that gives you more of an explanation of how I get through this life of chronic pain, daily horrible pain. And a quick bonus is although I mentioned a heating pad and an ice pack, I didn't mention your bed. A very good place to lie down, rest, or sleep. Whether it's your bed or your favorite chair or your couch or just something that provides your body a moment of relaxation. That is the most important thing. For me, that is my bed. I love my bed. And every night that I get into my bed and I get under my covers, I think I love my bed because I love it that much. My bed is a tempur At the time, it was the best tempur that came out. I bought it about eight years ago. So I'm sure there's other models now, but I love it so much. It's a California King. It's the big thick one, and it has d different pads in it, but it's more of a firm bed. Now that is the only bed that I could even lay on before my spinal fusion, after my spinal fusion, and now. It's the only bed that I want. But for some of you, you may want something softer. I prefer having the firm support of this Tempur-Pedic. All right, friends, so there it is. There's how I manage my daily pains. If you want me to elaborate on anything specific, drop a comment in the comment section and let's have another discussion. All right, guys and gals, so stay tuned for the next video. I appreciate all your support. Love you all, and I'm praying for you. Take care.